Hey everybody, it's your boy Sean, the American in Krakow, back in the studio about to do his first gaming video. So, this will be officially the first video I record and post on my gaming channel, um, but not my first YouTube video. I've got two other channels. I've got a reaction channel and my motorcycle vlog channel. I think you can see some of my helmets back there. And uh, I just wanted to, I thought I was gonna record a really cool or like very positive and happy video about my experience with this particular product I wanna talk about today. Um, because that's how my thought started. And unfortunately, since the th idea of recording this and actual time using it has gone by, which has only been two days, uh, a lot of things have changed. So what I'm here to talk about specifically is the Razer Huntsman Mini. And this is one, Razer's first 60% keyboard, and two, my first 60% keyboard. So it was gonna be a pretty interesting journey together. And I will be honest with you, out of the box and hooking it up to my PC for the first time, I was loving it, loving it. It felt better, it sounded better. It, it just was an overall better experience than my previous keyboard, which is this guy right here, hold on. Oy, it's big and heavy. I was using a HyperX Alloy, I believe this is. Uh, Alloy FPS RGB. And I mean, it's not a terrible keyboard, but due to its size, because I found myself spread out so far between the mouse and the WSAD keys, I didn't like that feel. And it's really loud. I didn't recognize how loud it was until I swapped to this keyboard. And I've seen other reviews, people talking about it's not the quietest keyboard. Compared to what I was using, this thing is stealth-like. Anyway, so this was all gonna be a really great positive thing. And then day two happened. Um, like I said, I loved using this keyboard the first day. It was new to me, new, 60, new to 60%. It took me a minute to get used to it. Like I'm not used to having the actual backspace key being the last key on the keyboard anymore. Just these things that you kind of learn over a long time of typing on a full keyboard. And, you know, at some point it was, it was becoming kind of natural. It was feeling great. And I, I was really excited. And I was like, oh, I'm going to record a video and I'm going to, Maybe this is my first video on my gaming channel and, and it, it's going to be cool. And then day two happened. And to make a long story short, <laughs> on the second day, I got a firmware update. Uh, Synapse app update and a firmware update to the keyboard is what it said. And since that firmware update, all hell has broken loose. I cannot use this keyboard. It's... If I turn my computer off and turn it back on, on upon boot up, and it could be a proper cold boot up from Windows 10, like dead off, or a UEFI startup, just a quicker startup from, from off, either has the same problem. It takes forever after I actually enter my password, forever to get to the desktop. And then once I get to the desktop, the few apps I do have that load up on startup take forever to load. And then once they're done, the system is still actually unresponsive for anywhere from five to up to 10 minutes sometimes where I can open applications. Like I can use my mouse and click on um, Chrome or I can click on anything and it'll open, but then it won't load properly or I won't be able to type into it. It just, just the system is stuck and there's no indication. Like I can do task manager. There's no processor stuff. Nothing seems to be out of order. And then all of a sudden, things start working. And I was troubleshooting for a while. I tried the Synapse app. Maybe I did something wrong. Um, erased, reset my profile, my color profiles. Because the only thing I had set was a color. I did a custom color uh, setup on it. I like the ripple effect, sorry. And, you know, that was, that was it. But I said maybe I, in the process, I clicked something and I did something wrong. So I reset everything. Nothing. Uninstalled Synapse. Still the same. And finally, a buddy of mine suggested, hey, try just put your old keyboard back. 
And in my head, I'm thinking, no way. Yeah, that was it. I put the alloy back and everything went right back to normal. Immediately. Restarted it, password entered, full screen, or my screen loaded right up, applications were there, and I could start typing immediately on my desktop. No delay, no lag, nothing. I, I was shocked. Maybe it's the Synapse app, right? I uninstalled it. I may have mentioned that. But maybe it left something in the registry or, or it did something. So I even did a system restore and I restored my system back two days prior to me installing the keyboard. And it's still, but I had the keyboard on it. Like I put the keyboard in right after I shut it down to let it come back up with this keyboard connected. Uh, this being the Razer Huntsman Mini. And same problems all over again. Shut it down, put the HyperX back in, turned it back on, no problems. It was incredible. Never thought I'd see the day a keyboard, brand new key, I know there's faulty keyboards, but this is a brand new keyboard. And it was working great for a full day. I loved it. So I went on the forums, HyperX, uh, Hyper, uh, Razer's support forum, and there it was, starting from December 22nd. People, there were only a handful of posts, but there were posts saying, hey, after firmware update X on my Huntsman Mini, Windows 10 becomes unresponsive on boot up. And they even said, hey, if I put another keyboard, it works fine. I can put the Huntsman back afterwards, after a few minutes, and it's fine, which is what I've done. I boot up with the HyperX and put the Huntsman back, and it's okay. But that's not acceptable. That's not how it's supposed to work. But there was no comments from Razor on the form. And there was no comments about anybody contacting support. Uh, maybe there was one comment saying, oh, hopefully somebody from Razor sees this and will fix it. I'm like, well, you can't hope. You got to do something. So I contacted Razor support on the phone. And they answered right away. And I'll, you know, props to the support technician, right? It, I personally have decades, two decades of call center experience, uh, being a technician all the way up to managing call centers globally. Um, call centers are what I did for a long time. And the guy was good. Like he was okay. He wasn't the best technician in the world, but you, the first lines generally aren't right. That's why they're first line techs. Cause they also have to deal with repairs and customer support questions and silly things. You don't want to engineer on the phone at that level. So I get it. Um, he logged a ticket for me. He, but it, what was thing was clear was this issue was kind of weird to him and unknown to him. I'm like, Oh, okay. Maybe they don't know. Maybe nobody's called in about it. And he walked me through the general steps and, and okay, that's, that's what they got to do. I, I wasn't too upset about it. I tried not to be anyway. And eventually he had to escalate me to a, to a higher level of engineering support. He came back and said, hey, they'll get back to you in 24 hours by email or something. Okay, whatever. But he did mention that they were aware of the issue and will get back to me. I'm like, oh, that's funny because you should have been aware of it too. I didn't say that. That was just a thought in my head. I'm like, well, they should let you know so you don't kind of waste anybody's time on the phone. If they tell you they got the firmware update and they have this scenario, it should be an immediate escalation. That wasn't the case. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not saying that guy wasted my time. It could have been spent better though. And I would have felt better about the process. So, okay. I was still trying to be helpful. And I said, Hey, but by the way, I got this firmware yesterday and it was pushed to me. Maybe you should take the firmware off your website. So other people don't get it and less cases, less tickets for you to deal with. He's like, oh, that's a good idea, but I don't think he was going to pass that on to anybody. That's the feeling I got anyway. But, hey, it is what it is. But I can honestly tell you that this experience has left a bad enough taste in my mouth for what is, has been, my first Razer product, and not a cheap one by any means. This thing is $130. because I got the one with the red optical linear switches not the purple clickies. Um, and like I said, I love how it feels. I even love how it sounds. And I'll, I'll go ahead and do a, a quick soundbite 
of how this sounds compared to the HyperX alloys. Somewhere, I'll do it right here. So as I was saying, I love this keyboard, but it left this experience is of such a bad taste in my mouth. I've already ordered an AND Pro 2 on Pro 2, and it'll be here next, maybe later this week even. I ordered it from the Czech Republic. Uh, they have a stock in the Czech Republic, so, and I'm in Poland. So as I mentioned, this thing's $130 in the US. It's more expensive here in Poland. And I got the ON2 for almost half the price. And it's gotten, it's been around a lot longer. It's got a ton of great reviews. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. But to be honest, just the experience itself has left such a sour taste in my mouth that I went ahead and ordered a second keyboard. If we can't get this resolved, because rolling back firmware shouldn't be magic. It shouldn't be a, a, a difficult process usually. And in my opinion, that's what all that's going to take was to roll back the firmware to the previous firmware that worked great. But... I will, I'll send another, I'll do another video once I hear back from Razer and, and let you guys know how this got sorted out or if it even got sorted out or if I'm going to continue using it. Maybe I'll return it. I don't know. I've had it only for two days. I should be able to return it. But I will let you know. <laughs> it's unfortunate. I really wanted this to be like my first actual recorded video, not just some game clips up that I've thrown up on the channel to be something positive. Like, you know, I thought maybe I'll be talking about my gaming PC. Um, and it's not that I bought a gaming PC in particular. I'm a console gamer pr traditionally. I've only recently moved over to PC gaming. And that's only because I needed a better machine to do the editing for my other channels. And I realized there's a lot of similarities between gaming and consoles for, or for rigs for editing, content creation. So I ended up, you know, due to GPU shortages and everything else this year, I ended up getting on an HP... Omen 30L with a 2080 Ti and a 3900X, an AMD Ryzen 3900X, 12 core. And it was great. Like system technically on paper, it was great. The Omen case though, problematic. And, and so I didn't want that to be my first video either because um, it wasn't that great of an experience in the end. I, I had to do a bunch of stuff to get it to work right. Uh, and I really thought this Razer was going to be like my first positive review of something regarding me and my experience gaming or moving over to PC gaming. And it turns out it wasn't. But, you know, I had to start at some point. I couldn't just post random clips up on there and expect something to happen. I had to record a video, put it out here for you guys. And I figured, hey, if anything, you guys either come across the same problem I have, letting you know that, hey, it is a problem. Or if you were thinking about it, I'd still love this keyboard if I didn't have this problem. And I might, I probably, if they can resolve this for me by tomorrow, I probably will still continue to love this keyboard and keep it right here on my desk and keep it as my primary. We'll see what happens when the on two comes and I mess around with it. But uh, for now, if I, I will tell you, if they can resolve this problem, this will still be my primary keyboard until. The on two comes and then maybe I'll have a choice. I'll probably just maybe keep one of them for my my notebook, for my MacBook. And when I travel, I'll just carry it with me because they're so tiny. It's awesome. But we'll, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyway, that's gonna be it. You know, go ahead and 
you know, if you like these type of videos, this type of video, this type of stuff you want to see me do, leave some comments down below. Um, let me know. Yeah, I, I console game. I'm trying to get into PC gaming. Um, I'm, I've got a bunch of gear I've recently all just acquired because of this. So I can talk about, you know, my Dell monitor, my LG monitor, my Frankenstein HP 30, uh, Omen 30L, which is no longer in an HP Omen case. Um, <laughs> my keyboards, uh, even the audio setup that I have here for what I do for my streaming or for uh, my other channels or just recording my reactions. I've got a bunch of gear here that I've all acquired over some time and I can talk about if you're interested. Anyway, go ahead and like, subscribe, hit that notify bell if this is what you want to do. Also, check out my Instagram. Link will be up here somewhere or my other channels. Link will be in the description below. Anyway, thanks y'all. Peace.